And we welcome you back to Fresh Outlook. Well, this week, Dee Dee, I'm saying it to you, it is the end of an era. <laughs> We're got a little I'm tears so in our upset. eyes. That. <laughs> and Dee Dee and I have been to David Letterman a few times. Well, the longest serving late night host in TV history has announced that he is retiring next year. And oh, my heart. I've been watching him so for upset how many years. about it. Love him. He's the best. He's the king of late night. He's I didn't realize he was the longest running late night host. I thought Johnny Carson was, mm -hmm. but uh, but he actually is. And you know, I, I, the only thing is, I, I, do you think it's because these younger guys are coming in and he, he's worried about ratings, or is it just time to go? I think it's smart to go out on top. I mean, he's a king. I mean, right now he is the best. So why not go and then have fun with his kid? He's got a young kid, and you know, go and travel and enjoy. You know, he, he's, he's done the job. Although, it, you know, bad for us, but good for him. And as I said, I think that he could run for mayor of New York. I would love that. Way better than de Blasio. <laughs> My goodness. He would totally cream de Blasio. Are you a fan, Dr. Preston? <laughs> yeah, I have to say, uh, what you, I mean, you just made me think for a second. Um, how much of like a social parallel like the Letterman show has been for decades. I, you know, I, can't, I can think back to as, as a child, and, and he's been around since then. Well, anybody that's what? Well, he's, six, he's been on for well, even Gosh, on John Carson. When, what was his first year? I don't know. What was it? I, I, I think he's forever. been on for 28 years or something, and we just saw the 3,000th show. So yeah, we should know yeah, this. that was fun. <laughs> um, well, and you know, he's from Indiana, so we all love him in Indiana. Right, yeah, he has yeah, a yeah. bad grocery. He's at Atlas uh, Grocery Store, <laughs> and he went to Broad Ripple, and, he, and he's been funny his whole life. He used to do the weather and go, oh, forget it. I don't want to do the weather anymore. And he'd start talking about something else. And the <laughs> funny thing is about him, though, is he is such, he's so quick-witted, of mm. course, he's a comedian. But he's an intellect. He is so smart. The best interviewer, except for you, Mia. Well. He's the best guy <laughs> interviewer. He's the best guy interviewer. He really is. He absolutely is fabulous. Um, certainly going to be missed. But you know what? We'll get all go. We'll, we'll get all tickets. We got to bring our producer F A. He's been asking me to get him tickets. Well, also. Mia's got the contact. She knows everybody. She can so, get us in to the right, Letterman show. Worry, the whole now now the go. whole world is going to want to get tickets from you, Mia. <laughs> all right. Well, tickets for what is being called the final five Monty Python live shows also went on sale, and you can't believe this. The first show sold in 43 and a half seconds. These guys again, smart intellectual but funny I okay mean, this not is where you and i are going to part ways again because <laughs> she loves the royals and this you i do not get this humor i think it's so stupid and dumb and ridiculous i don't get that i cannot i mean it, it's three stooges to me I, I cannot watch this for more than 10 seconds. No, no, sorry. This, this I know is, you're all thinking blast for me, but sorry. I cannot I, yeah, stand I, I, this. At this point, I I'm cannot saying imagine. Terrible. This might be one of my favorite scenes coming up. Yeah, I think okay. it's the rabbit scene. I, I, the, I, the, I, the rabbit <laughs> attacks him. Yeah, this is, this is what comedy was for me growing up in the 70s and 80s. This was a you know, definitional way of understanding wit and humor, and it's so classically British. And uh, But isn't it funny that across the pond, if you will, how different the humor is. Yeah, we, like me, I don't get it. I'm an all-American girl. I do not get this. Dr. Bart, are you a big fan of uh, Letterman? Uh, how about Monty Python? Well, Letterman, I, I really, I really like his, uh, you know, his humor and his dry wit. I think that that's a personality mm -hmm. that I think we can relate to, and I, I give him a lot of credit for presenting himself as he is. But with Monty Python, I, I, I'm in the same league here <laughs> with Dee Dee. I, I'm a Jersey <laughs> guy. I don't, I don't really Awful. get this humor. But I do give them credit for being unique. I think when people are unique and they're on the scene and they contribute something, that's fine. Me, I'm Sinatra, Michael Bublé. I'd like what to is that going to do with anything? Sinatra, that's, a, that's, a, that's, a, that's music. <laughs> I, I think the attack rabbit in the Holy Grail scene is one of the funniest things I have ever seen in my life. You just love the royals. You like that British thing, Mia. Wait, you see what I'm in, in the show oh, I know, I know. <laughs> and the, life, the life of Brian, I mean, this is the other, no, sorry, I'm going to give the political science commentary on this. I mean, there was a tremendous <laughs> amount of social criti critique in much of Monty Python talking about sort of uh, life in the 1970s in, in the UK and uh, I think for the American audience, it was an excellent way of uh, giving a comical way of looking at how how life. See, that's the problem. Nothing good happened in the '70s. That was a terrible decade. Anything with the but '70s. But it produced no. great comedy. We usually uh, need. I like, guess. We usually that's do. what you yeah, think. Do you know the, there's more comedies on right now because the world, especially right here in the U.S., because the of the economy, there's more. Uh, there's they're getting rid of the reality shows. Thank goodness. And putting more <laughs> comedies on right now and family shows. Well, after the recent job reports, maybe we'll have to suffer less comedy. Oh, there. 
there you go. <laughs> Comedy, economy's bouncing back. I, but I always find that interesting when you do watch television that if you look in like the 1950s, you had all the family shows, mm -hmm. the Leave it to Beaver, Lassie, things like that. It's very interesting to watch. And in the 70s, watch. you have All in the Family and the Jeffersons. Yes. And, well, I and love the funny shows as long as they're really funny. Yeah. But just, ha just how, you know, what was happening socially how it pertains to the comedy and the TV shows. Mm -hmm. All right, well, speaking of TV, everybody, are you ready for this one down in Florida, Dr. Bart? Okay. Are you ready? <laughs> Batman, you got it. Batman is turning 75, Dr. Bart. Uh, got a couple facts about Batman to tell you. Um, there's a Batman versus Superman coming out. That's the first thing. And everyone is, uh, obviously, we've been talking about this, has been taking to Twitter to talk about whether Ben Affleck can be Batman. So the question is, why is Batman so popular after 75 years? Dr. Bart, you're a psychologist. <laughs> well, we, we always talk about personality, right? And that the, a winning personality. And I think Batman takes us away to other places. Uh, we could look at Batman and, and kind of laugh and think and, and enriches wow, our mind. It's an escape. <laughs> It's a lot of positive things, and I think... Uh, well, you always get the bad guy. No, but he's the Dark Knight, though. You got it all wrong on this one, Dr. Arsene. I'm sorry. Oh, this, is it's dark dark this is the Dark Knight. This is the dark superhero. Superman's the positive one. But I'm over Batman, especially Ben Affleck. He's going to ruin the whole thing. I'm for Wonder Woman. Where's Wonder Woman? We've had so many movies. Where is Wonder Woman? Where is the Wonder, Wonder, Wonder Woman movie? Where's the gender Enough fairness? Already. Yeah, I agree with that. Okay. Well, well, but where is Wonder Woman? She was pretty popular in the 1970s. Very popular, and we should have a Wonder Woman movie. I am over Batman. Batman. It's All right. time for Wonder Woman. Well, you're kind of a Wonder Woman. Well, we'll see what so you're yeah, so uh, we, we should be in the movie. And I'm, I know you're going to agree. What are you going to say to that? Yeah, you have to agree to this one. I'm Dr. Moore, you got to agree to this Absolutely. <laughs> you're outnumbered. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, there's another hero up in Boston, and uh, if anybody uh, likes baseball, I know you do, Dr. Bart. Big oh, yeah. Poppy, uh, well, he's actually, Dr. Bart, he's in big trouble this week with the White House. Uh, the Boston Red Sox slugger David Ortiz, he took a selfie with President Obama this week. Now, he, of course, was doing some social media stuff for Samsung, and the White House has come out pretty strongly and said, you know what, you can't profit again with having a selfie with the president. What are your thoughts on that? I think it's ridiculous because, you know, Obama took a selfie at the funeral of uh, Nelson Mandela, so that was bad judgment. This isn't worse than that, so, you know, I think he should just get over it. Well, it was done in fun, um, but there are people that are, that are now profiting off of it. Mm -hmm. so Samsung. What? So what? Big deal. Well, it, but it is interesting. I, I think it poses an interesting question in terms of endorsements. Mm -hmm. um, if you get an endorsement, if you have to get an, if we want somebody to come on here and endorse Fresh Outlook from a big celebrity or so, or President Obama, it's going to be a couple well, of million bucks. The they would expect royalties. The Absolutely. Look, if, if you're going to do the selfie, get over it. If you're going to be in a selfie, you need to know that that can go anywhere. Anything Ag can happen with it. Agreed. To completely agree. But I think what happens now is corporations are going to be asking to not take selfies. I mean, well, maybe. It, that, that's where I mm -hmm. think this is going to be going. Dr. Bart, you agree? Well, I think, yeah, I think the profit issue is, is a real one here. I mean, I, Dee Dee's got a good point that if you're taking a selfie, you know, you don't know where it's going to go. But the profit thing is one thing. But for David Ortiz, who the media and everybody said was washed up four years ago, his bat speed was no good, <laughs> he's a lousy baseball player. Congratulations to him for making it and making a comeback and having three great years because I like the guy. I'd like to see A Rod do that too, Dr. Bart, but that's, we'll have to talk about that offline. But, you know, <laughs> that's a whole baseball thing, everybody. But I do agree. He's the comeback kid for Boston, and he certainly has led that city, especially after uh, the bombings last year. It certainly has been a wonderful, positive thing True. for that city. Definitely. And sorry about your luck, but he took the selfie. Good for him. I mean, if he got the selfie, let him utilize it for whatever. I, no, so I just, but, but again, I just think that this is going to pose a question for corporations, companies, foundations, whatever mm. it might be moving forward. Where do you take a selfie? And even for on-air personalities, who can you take a selfie with? Well, the other question is, is what if it's used not necessarily for commercial? Um, uh, yeah, usage. what if you put what like if, a big fat body on it or something? Or what if you do some weird yeah, but configuration? Or, or, but what if you use it for a, as a political endorsement or something? Yeah, that's, like true. that's true too. And, that's true. and so that, that is a whole set that's a real slippery slope. No, and I think, that, I think that's a, a, a great point because as you have uh, upcoming elections, I think that you're going to start seeing, you know, who do you take a selfie with? Mm -hmm. what if yeah, you, look, if I took a selfie with Rahm Emanuel, who I don't like at all, and I'd say, he sucks, he's a terrible mayor. I mean, you know, it could really... Probably make him a little bit angry. Yes, and we saw him at Letterman. Remember? We did. <laughs> that's why. That's why I was on my mind, Mia. <laughs>
All right, well, we have our final topic. This one is especially for Dee Dee. <laughs> uh, we have a new portrait for the royal family. Uh, there it is. Ah, uh, there. Isn't that adorable, though? I mean, and I know, Dee Dee, you're going, ah, that's so cute. You've got, probably got it already on your iPad. Oh, yeah, right. Um, but interesting, I was reading a little bit about the photographer who took the first portrait for the family. And what everybody is saying about this portrait is that it just looks like a normal family. And she oh, really captured that. Oh, come on. I'm sorry, it looks that's like a normal family. This is the biggest welfare, royal welfare family ever. They don't have to work at all. They just get to hang out. That baby doesn't have to work a day in his life just because he's got blue blood. I'm sorry. They do not look like a normal family. I think that little baby, <laughs> looking at that Cocker Spaniel, is about as adorable as it gets. I don't know how many pictures. I tried to read up on how many times it took that a uh, photographer to capture that moment, but uh, exactly. I think it's Exactly. That's not normal, Mia. That's like taking 5,000 pictures <laughs> to get the perfect royal shot. Okay. All right, Dr. Not Bart, normal. any last thoughts on this? <laughs> I don't think there's anything wrong with a wholesome picture, but I kind of lean in Dini's direction on this one again because, you know, I, I don't know about the, you know, the royalty. It just, it, it does have another side to it that I, I'm not too favor uh, to. I, I, I just have a You're question. You're killing about, me, Dr. Bart. <laughs> Yeah, Let me give you some snobbery. support. I, I, I kind of, I used to really not like like the royals and, and the whole political issue of the royals aside, um, uh, your Scottish blood is probably boiling yeah, at exactly. the side of the royals. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's a big uh, part of it as well. Scottish <laughs> independence aside, We want too. our Scottish independence. We're my, over my, the royals. My Enough from, already. My family's from Italy. I met the Queen <laughs> Mum when I was going to school in, in, I went to university in London. I met the Queen Mum and I was more excited about meeting her than just about anybody else. <laughs> I've never Why? met any, any of the British royal family. I met the Prince of Serbia a couple of months ago, and he was about as 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 down to earth and nice as you could possibly just get. Just as and, the and royal couple are, Kate and uh, I'm sorry, but they're but not it's down to earth. such a beautiful picture. I just think it's cute. Oh, well, I, the, 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 that dog is looking right into that baby's eyes. I think it's a beautiful oh my picture. Gosh. <laughs> oh, stage, stage. Dee -dee. <laughs> the monarchy, the royals. Your royal. You must have some royal blood, man. I'm, I'm just a, I'm just a Scottish serf. You know, just just that's just how we roll. That's okay. It's all good. <laughs> Well, on that note, that is all we have time for this week. I'm Mia Toski from all of us here at Fresh Outlook. Thanks for your company, and we'll see you back here next week.